Hey guys, it's Bub here, and today we're going to be comparing VMware Workstation Pro and Microsoft's Hyper-V to decide which one is right for you. First off, we're going to take a look at the installers for both applications. VMware Workstation Pro's installer is very similar to many other Windows application installers. All you really have to do is click Next, Next, and Next. A license key for this product is $249 direct from VMware, however, you can use a 30-day evaluation period. There is also VMware 15 Player, which is free. For Hyper-V, we actually don't even need an executable installer. All we have to do is open Turn Windows Features on or off, select Hyper-V, make sure all Hyper-V attributes are selected, and then click OK. A restart will be required. We can now take a look at VMware Workstation Pro's user interface. We have our list of virtual machines on the left side. We have a big Create New Virtual Machine button, open a virtual machine, and connect to a remote server right in the middle of our display. You can switch between multiple virtual machines and your home page easily with the tab at the top. To open Hyper-V, we just have to type in Hyper-V Manager and then open the Manager from the Start menu. In my opinion, the Hyper-V Manager is way less user-friendly than the Workstation Pros is, however, I believe this is because Hyper-V is meant to run virtual machines that are meant to be remoted into by thin clients. Creating a new virtual machine in Workstation Pro is very simple. Just click create a new virtual machine, select your type of configuration, and then you can select an ISO or I will install an operating system later. If you select an ISO and VMware detects what operating system you're installing, it will use easy install. If you do choose I will install the operating system later, you will see that VMware Workstation Pro supports a wide range of operating systems, from Windows to Linux to VMware ESX or any other operating system such as Mac OS or MS-DOS. Once you've selected your operating system, VMware will then ask you to select a name, select the hard disk size, and then confirm all your specs for your virtual machine. VMware Workstation Pro will then open up a new tab with your virtual machine inside. Here you can see all the settings that you've selected and you can change the settings. When you're ready, you can then power on this virtual machine and then the same tab will turn into your virtual machine connection. On Hyper-V, we can either use the quick virtual machine creation, which I never use, or we can go to new virtual machine and use that wizard there. When it loads, it will give you some information. You have to click next and name your virtual machine. Once you do that, it will ask you for the Generation 1 or Generation 2, Generation 2 is UEFI, select your memory, and then select a network switch. We didn't configure this yet, but I will configure this in the next clip. We can then select a virtual hard disk or create a new one, create the actual virtual machine, and then start it up. Before we boot up the virtual machine, we have to create a new switch in the Virtual Switch Manager. Create a new external switch select your external network which in my case is Dell Wireless and name it something appropriate. Once you do that make sure you select the switch in your virtual machine and then your VM has internet. We can then double click on the virtual machine in the virtual machine list it will bring up the virtual machine connection. We can then click start to start the virtual machine and it will then start up our Windows 8.1 machine. Now this display configuration screen is a part of the enhanced session which I will talk about later. This enhanced session is only compatible with Windows 8.1 and 10. The alternative to an enhanced session on VMware is VMware Tools. While there is no software to install for Hyper-V's enhanced session, it does allow you to make the screen resolution natively bigger. Hyper-V's virtual machine connection is basically just a remote desktop into the virtual machine. The typical animations you would see on Windows 8 are non-existent. All the animations have been replaced with just pop-ups. There's no animations for the start menu, windows opening, or anything like that. Let's go back to the whole enhanced session VMware tools thing. With VMware tools, you can enable Arrow on Windows 7 or Windows Vista, and you can utilize all of VMware's features using VMware tools for other operating systems. However, on Hyper-V, enhanced session is only available for Windows 8.1 and Windows 10. This means that on Hyper-V, Windows 7 or Vista does not get arrow and the resolution does not go up to 1080p. This can be a deal breaker for many because Hyper-V is meant for Windows 8.1 and 10 which is why it gets the enhanced sessions. Meaning you can run other Linux distributions and other operating systems in Hyper-V, however it just won't work as well as it would in VMware. We should also add that Hyper-V does not work on Windows 10 Home, you need Windows 10 Pro or above. 
In my opinion, the better hypervisor is VMware Workstation unless you need something specifically for remoting into virtual machines. In that case, you would then be able to use Hyper-V. Anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here. I do tons of technology videos and device restorations. Anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.